welcome back to the channel. If you haven't already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn them notifications on. So we're back today and we're getting on now with the drilling work in the autumn. So I'm currently sat on our JXU 105 with the Kun power harrow behind. That's a three meter power. Uh, there's not really much else. It's a bearish age machine. And I'm just working down the furrows in front of Mark who's on the drill. Now I am currently, I would say, around about 10 acres ahead of him, but that doesn't matter. He is currently drilling uh, winter wheat on the case puma with a Mashio drill behind. So the variety we're drilling is JB Diego, and that's the same variety across the board, same variety on first and seconds. At the moment we're currently drilling second wheats. Uh, we're doing the seconds first and then do the first seconds. That's kind of a good logic, isn't it? We do our second wheats first, and then we do our first wheat seconds. The second, the sort of theory behind that is that the first wheats will stay a little bit drier than the second wheat stubbles prior to drilling, and it just kind of makes it a little bit easier. So far, I think he's drilled. Well, I'm on the third field today, but that doesn't really matter. We don't need to know where we are. I want to hold this camera out of the sun that's a pain. So we got, I don't know how many acres to drill, quite a few. I would say it's about, about 70 to 80 acres. And uh, yeah, the conditions this year are slightly different to last year's drilling conditions. We'll just give you a quick show of last year's conditions. It's a little bit drone footage now that you're looking at from when we were drilling last year. And that's actually the field just behind me that you can see and you'll be able to tell that it's really wet. Uh, extremely wet actually, probably shouldn't have been drilling it, the conditions were not brilliant and we're also doing things a little bit differently there, you'll see we've got the plow and drill combination in the field all at once. This year doing things very very different, so just a quick talk through the processes this year, we have first of all finished combining, got all the bales off, Pete, I tell you what, it took us about two hours, two hours to lug all the bales. Usually it takes us about a bloody week. So yeah, this year it took us two hours. Uh, we spread some muck on the fields that you will have already seen. It's currently the 20th of September, the date that we were told we could start drilling or advised to start drilling by the agronomist. We sort of stuck to that. So first of all, Mark's gone through all of the stubble fields and subsoiled them all. Not just the tram lines, the whole field, subsoiled it the opposite way to the tram lines and the opposite way to what we're going to drill it. Then he's gone through with the plow, plowing them over obviously the opposite direction to what we've subsoiled them. And then on the furrows again, we've gone through with the subsoiler following the furrows. So we're sort of crossing over from the, off the last time that we subsoiled it. Now the reason we've subsoiled twice this time is we had an extremely wet winter last year and we believe that the ground is going to be extremely panned. Uh, that plow pan is going to be really, 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 really solid basically. And what we don't want is to get these crops in in good conditions, but not break them pans up enough so that the water can get away into them land drains. We don't want to be in the situation where we're going to have water lay on the fields again. So we decided that we would go twice over with a, with a subsoiler, basically to give it the best opportunity of draining away. And you will, have been, will be able to see that the subsoiler does two jobs in one, works the ground down well, but also it is subsoiling and breaking up our fly pan. And then obviously we come through with our power arrow. Now again, this ground here is a little bit heavier clay in places and it doesn't work down quite as well for one pass of the power hour and drill as we would kind of like. Uh, that's why we run this power harrow in front, just so we can get the, the optimum seed bed for this seed and give it the best start possible. Then after the power has been through, we go through with the other power harrow, which has got the drill on the back of it. And finally, to finish off, we go on with our Cambridge rolls and get the fields rolled and the seed bed compacted. Anyway, on with the job in hand. We'll catch up with you guys a bit later on.
a look at these conditions we got here. We have got glorious sun. We got dust flying. There was no signs of that last year when the wheat was going in. And down here, just look at this for a real nice seabed. This ground here usually would be sort of around that size. This time we're getting it real, real nice and down to dust. And what we've actually got is when we dig down into the seabed a little bit, you're able to see that there is still quite a lot of moisture in here. Ideal growing conditions, a lot better than last year. We've got the warmth, we've got the moisture in the ground, and we've got the fine soil as well. So what we're gonna try and do with getting it a little bit finer is try and reduce the risk of slugs and any slug damage, and also give that seed an easier growth up through the surface of the ground. This seed bed here is about as good as we're gonna get down here. But we're really happy with how this is going in. Mark's a little bit hot today. Uh, the air conditioning's packed up on his tractor, so yeah, he's a little bit uh, a little bit warm in there today. And it's quite common, isn't it, really? You're gonna have a problem with your air conditioning. You get a colder day where you've got it on, but you're not really needing it. You get a hot day like today, and it goes totally wrong and then you got no air con. It's always the rule. It's some, there is an actual saying for it, but I've got no idea what that is. Anyway, I've finished my working down for the day and we'll see where we go with this video.
there is the ploughing and sewing and all the rest of the tillage work completed and you join me actually stood in what was the first field to be drilled so it is now three weeks and three days on from when we drilled this field and you can already see from behind me it's looking really well uh, let me just flip the camera and that is how the crop is looking at the moment some nice straight drilling there that's not very common on this farm <laughs> so we'll just have a quick look down here are our plants and this is obviously winter wheat uh we'll just have a quick look at this one and you can see it is easily in its second leaf so here's the first one and here's the second and then just down the stem the third will be coming through in amongst here we have got our annual meadow grasses starting to poke through these fields were not pre-emerged we decided this year that we would go with a later application of spray when these plants had established more so the plan is to spray these fields when they're at third leaf stage the reason we sort of didn't pre-em and did a sort of post emergency is we can put more sprays into one so we can sort of use the same sprays that we would with the pre-emergence along with some feeds for the plants so we're going to go on with a foliar feed which is just to encourage the root structure and the root of the plant get it down to them nutrients in the ground that it wouldn't usually reach but just look at how well this is looking if we look back to january of this year when last year's crops were in they were nowhere near this stage and they would have been in for three uh three months by then two months by then i think three weeks and this is where we're looking at yeah what helped this time was the fact that we were earlier with the planting it's a little bit wet here look um, that's to be expected on this ground though. I have got to find the way back through to the other field now. Go down into the overgrowth. You'll see here we have got a way through our bridge. This is actually on a public footpath here across our ground. So the uh, council, I think, put this bridge in. Fantastic for us when we want to go over there and check on that field. This is the other field that was drilled on the same day as the last one same situation again really looking extremely well we're really chuffed we're really happy with how it went in you will have seen from the video you've just watched conditions were brilliant ground was really dry there it's actually still very dry now and we have had quite a fair amount of rain as well since we were drilling we've actually not had the best settled weather this is the nicest day we've had in a fair while today so yeah not going to go too much in depth into how about the crops at the moment because i'm going to save that for another video as of now i didn't even say this before we have finished the drilling we finished the last seeds went in the ground a week ago yesterday um but that was just empty in the seed drill we've actually finished for two weeks to uh, properly finish what we wanted to do two weeks tomorrow what i mean by we had three parts of a hopper left in the drill and we'd got a field that we were leaving fallow so we drilled it out on there that was a week ago yesterday but really we finished two weeks ago tomorrow if that makes sense it probably doesn't but now i will make my way back home I just look at that anyway i'd like to thank you all for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next one